We just got on the Inc. 5000 list, which I'm so proud of. Um, The growth has been insane. We've actually doubled sales over the last three years consecutively. Hey, welcome to this special episode of Shopify Masters. I'm your host, Shwang Esther Shan, and my inner fangirl is screaming right now. Okay, we are speaking to someone who has gotten me and millions of other people to do planks and crunches all without needing to leave the house. And she also designs activewear and workout equipment in a much more thoughtful way. Cassie Ho is our guest today. You may know her as Blogilates, one of the most successful fitness YouTubers in the world. She's also the CEO and lead designer of Potflex, a line of athleisure apparel, equipment, and accessories. We are going to chat about her journey from content creator to business owner and every single hat and pairs of leggings that she has worn in between. Welcome to the show, Cassie. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, I'm so excited to chat with you. So as one of the earliest YouTubers, you've stayed so consistent with making videos throughout the years. And I know that every time I need a quick workout, I can look up and see something new on your page. So where does your motivation come from? My motivation really stems from the growth that I see and how many lives I'm impacting. Honestly, it's just really fun for me. Um, When it comes to fitness or design, it, it doesn't matter. Just seeing people be affected by whether it's the workouts I create or the clothing that I create, like it makes it this lasting thing that is so real and so tangible. And through the workouts on YouTube or even the clothes that I design, it's like we create such deep relationships with people because they're working out with me for 30 minutes, an hour a day, and I'm talking about my nails or Trader Joe's and we're really getting through something hard together. So it's not just like, you know, they're passively watching. So we build this really strong bond. And because that's how it started, and then the merchandise, the clothing, the design got into it, as that journey on YouTube was building, the trust was already building for the product line because my audience knows that I care about what they think, um, what workout they want to see next, but also how do we banish camel toe? How do we make a non-see-through squat-proof legging? Like I'm always listening. I'm constantly in the comments and it literally doesn't matter what I'm working on, but that feedback. like the, I find that so valuable because it really does help guide the company in the right direction because we're always serving. And I do believe that is why Bloglotties has been around for over 13 years now. Like I've been online since 2009. And back in the day, there weren't brand deals. There was no such thing as an influencer. I put up a video because I wanted to stay connected to my real life students at the gym. And because that intention has never changed, the connection, the teaching, that has really allowed um, Blogilates and now PopFlex to truly last. So Cassie, there's so many different aspects to your business. We mentioned Blogilates, PopFlex. You're also uh, having an app. You're also in the nutrition space. So tell us about all the different parts that you manage. Okay. So (laughs) there's quite a few brands. The one that is on Shopify is Pop Flex. So that's the D2C brand that is our innovative, more fashion forward, function forward clothing, activewear, gym bags, yoga mats, um, water bottles, all of that. Then there is the line at Target. So that's under the brand Blogilates. And that is not clothing. That is like gold dumbbells and like pink resistance bands and like pretty much more of an affordable and approachable brand that people who don't even know me will be able to find at the store. And so that's Blogilates. And we just recently got into nutrition. So you can find Blogilates not only in the fitness aisle, but also in the nutrition aisle uh, with a sweet cream protein powder and a chocolate shake protein powder and things like that. Then there is also Pop Pilates, which is the official um, Pilates of 24-Hour Fitness. So that is an instructor certification program. 
that's that. And then, you know, there's the app Body by Blogilates. And then there's also a comics page because who doesn't love comics? I grew up loving Sailor Moon. So I have to have a comics page where I just kind of just the, the funny take on things that happen in my life. Um, so that's bloggy comics and that's on um, Instagram and TikTok now. So that's where we play around with art, illustration, and also animation. So those are the brands, lots to take in, but pretty much I think today we'll be talking about Popflex and Blugilates. And one of the things is that digital media changes so much. What amazes me is that you're able to stay on top of trends, but also stay true to your way of telling stories. So how did you manage to balance the two? Well, I think when it comes to trying out new platforms, like I went on TikTok in 2019 and I was so confused. But you have to not be scared to try things. Um, And so luckily at that time, there was a trends page. And so I was like, okay, well, how do I take these trends and make the fitness version of it or the healthy living girl version of it? I tested that out. And, you know, if you start seeing success in a certain area, then you keep trying to go in that direction. But here's also the thing with me. I never want to keep doing the same thing because I know it's going to get out of style. And also for me, it's no longer challenging. Um, And so I'm always trying to figure out, well, what is actually interesting me? Like, what am I curious about? And those have always been my best performing content, the things where you take risk, right? So I stay on top of trends because it's kind of like what I'm interested in. Like, I'm, I'm always on the For You page. I'm always like looking at things everywhere. And I just like start noticing things. So even like when cottage core became super huge, I was like, oh, wow. Like I really like the little flowers and the dainty, you know, cottages and stuff. And so why don't we make a collection that's based on cottage core? And so like, I'm just like always in it because that's what I love. So I guess I'm lucky in that sense, but we don't really look at trend books or anything like that for colors. Uh, And this is going to sound crazy, but like, I just kind of feel it. Like really, I just feel the color. I feel the print that we want to go with. And um, yeah, it's innate right now. I I don't know how we're going to do this if (laughs) in the future, if I'm like not here, but uh, yeah, that that's how it's done right now. So has there been elements in your content creation process that has stayed consistent and that helps you to just follow whenever you're trying to create something new? So the content creation process is so different because just within the past couple of years, my content has completely shifted. So in 2009, up until probably two years ago, I was doing fitness content, long form content. So we're talking videos anywhere between 10 minutes to 30, 40 minutes where I am doing a workout with the people at home, right? From my living room. And honestly, after teaching crunches and planks and sit-ups for over a decade, I really just, my heart wasn't in it anymore. And look, I just want to be clear that every morning I work out, it's a non-negotiable and it's very much a part of my life. But teaching the same thing over and over again for over a decade, I just wasn't there anymore. And I could see that in even um, the engagement on my videos because your fans, your audience, like I feel like they can tell what's going on without really knowing what's going on. And around this time too, as our design business, our product business was really taking off, um, I was spending 95 to 97% of my time actually in product development and not working on content and filming YouTube videos. And I said to myself, I really want to be able to share this other part of myself with everybody because this is what I am doing like throughout the day. Because most people think I'm like working out all day, every day, but I'm not just like one hour in the morning. (laughs) And so I was like, how do I share the design aspect of me? Like that, that is me. And I started to share the why behind the design, the soul behind every product, because it takes nine to 12 months to create one thing. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. And to me, it's like you're birthing this baby. So I was like, okay, well, why don't I take that process and tell it in a story in 60 seconds or less? And I am just, I'm so lucky because now those are the pieces of content that not only go super viral for me, have grown my followers, have grown my views, but also it's completely sold out product lines in a matter of hours. And so right now I feel like things are working. The algorithm is working in my favor, but also I do believe that you really, consumers rarely get a chance to see inside the designer brain. And because we are a smaller, like 
the sketch comes from me. I'm a part of every fitting, every process from the beginning to the end, the marketing everywhere. So I can tell that story cohesively. So I'm glad that people really like that because seriously, like that's all, that's all I do all day long. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I think people might not realize like they see you as someone who's in the fitness space, but actually design was something that was constant in your life. And it's a passion that kind of was with you the whole time. So take us back to that first yoga bag that kind of started it all. Yeah. So for those that don't know, um, I'm Chinese and Vietnamese American. My parents immigrated from Vietnam and they very much were of the mentality academics first. You're going to be a doctor, a lawyer, or a failure. And when I told them that I wanted to be a fashion designer, they're like, nope, that is definitely never going to happen. Uh, You can be a doctor and run like a scrubs business on the side if you want. (laughs) <laughs> so to get through college, because I was, my heart was a hollow black hole. Like I was doodling on the sides of my notebooks. I started teaching Pilates actually, because that was something else that I truly loved. And my parents also were like, can you quit doing that? Like you're wasting your time, go study for physics. So I was going to teach Pilates. And then in the process of like taking all my stuff from the car to class, I was like, well, how am I supposed to hold my mat and my keys and my CDs and my towel like all in one place and something cute because everything was super ugly. And so I decided to go to downtown LA, source some clothes out fabrics, make my own super cute glam bag. And then when I brought that to class, people were like, whoa, what's that? I want one. So that was started in college. And um, when I graduated from school, a couple things happened. One, I decided to send a few of those bags out to magazines and just pray that someone would see something about this no-name brand that I decided to start in college. And then two, I also posted my first YouTube video because I wanted to stay connected with those students that I was teaching Pilates with before moving to the East Coast for my first glamorous, you know, quote unquote, glamorous fashion job. Um, And those two things were so pivotal because what ended up happening was I didn't even look at my YouTube channel until a couple months later. And then I saw it had thousands of views and hundreds of comments. I was like, what is this? What is a community? What What is happening? What are subscribers? And then also eight months into my corporate job, I found out that Shape Magazine had written like a small blurb about my yoga bag. Like I didn't even have a real brand at this point. And that was the moment I knew and I was so miserable at work that this was a sign from the universe telling me you need to go all in on yourself so that you don't regret anything in the future. And honestly, for me, I would rather fail so hard, fall flat on my face, than always ask myself, well, what if I could have or should have? So what I did was I quit my job, bought a ticket on Friday and left on Sunday to China to visit the Canton Fair. And that was my first time in China. I don't speak Chinese, even though I'm Vietnamese and Chinese. I had to get a translator to find a manufacturer for my bags. And um, I did that. And pretty much while I was doing the product development, and again, this is like all me, all by myself, no idea what I'm doing, but like just kind of trying to figure it out. I was making YouTube videos in between teaching 12 Pilates classes a week to make ends meet because I didn't have a job, a real job with real income. So this that whole process of my life was sticky and messy, but also so amazing because it was such a great teacher and really helped me build what I have today because of risk-taking and being forward with design and solving problems. And that's why all of our products really, at the end of the day, like they're helping to improve women's lives, active women's lives, and um, just trying to make things prettier and more happy at the same time. And like such a great start for your evolution of betting on yourself because the business side has really evolved. You know, you started with really fun merchandise for Blogilates, then it changed into Body Pop and now Pop Flex. So tell us about the different chapters and I guess rebranding challenges as well. Yeah. Okay. So you you've gone deep. You you know <laughs> all the old brands. Okay. So you're right. It started out actually uh, in a Facebook post, right? So I was just doing YouTube videos and then fans were like, well, can we have a Blogilates shirt? And I was like, why in the world would you want to wear my screen name? 
But like that was also the moment I realized, oh my God, maybe Blogilates is not just a screen name. It's a brand. Like people want to want to wear it. And so we had a design contest and I picked one of the designs that everyone in the community voted on. And back then, Facebook was such a pure place. People like I actually met up with these like Facebook fans. Like we actually like had dinner. Like it was such a different time back then. But um, yeah, my my then boyfriend and I, we were like screen printing the shirts ourselves. We bought the rib shirts from Forever 21. Like we just like made it. And then we put it up online and it sold out within minutes. It was crazy. And so it started out like that with a lot of graphic tees, motivational sayings, which were, you know, train insane and remain the same, train like a bees look like a beauty, which were so like 2012. Um, And then a lot of knockoffs started coming because that's so easy. Lots of knockoffs on Etsy and like literally everywhere. And so I wanted to transition out of that business um, and also because for me personally, even though everything was selling like hotcakes, I no longer wanted to wear it. And I think a lot of people in a traditional business sense would be like, don't stop selling it because it's selling well, like just keep selling it. But for me, I don't know. I'm always following my heart. And sometimes it uh, may sound nonsensical, but also it's always led me in the right direction. And my the direction was I wanted to get into serious active wear, like stuff that I would truly be proud of wearing. And that was really, really difficult. So we then got into body pop and that was my first experience trying to make garments from the bottom up, like from the sketch all the way to the tech pack, to the sampling and the sewing and the production and then shipping it here. And I really didn't know that much. And we had issues with production. That was one thing in quality because I didn't understand. But secondly, because it was my first clothing line, a lot of the fans were like, you forgot about us. You were pricing us out. But see, the thing was making products on like, or at least the level I wanted it to be at, was expensive, especially for a smaller company. So it's not that I wanted to price them out, right? But this was not making a motivational tea for $20. And so Body Pop was fine when it first began. But the reason why I actually changed the name to Pop Flex was because while we were working on um, trademarking and everything, we realized, realized that someone actually tried, in a different country, tried to block the name Body Pop specifically in Pilates wear. So I feel like someone was watching. And so we were like, okay, we're just not going to deal with that. Um, the company, the, the brand was so fresh at that point. So I changed it to Pop Flex. And really that's the story why it's called Pop Flex. Everyone thinks there is like some other reason. It's really just because of that. <laughs> but I like the name a lot. I, I like the the pop. I like the flex, flexibility, all of that. But Pop Flex is when things really started getting super serious. And the beginning of that was very difficult too, because I don't think people realize how hard it is to make a garment, but not just clothing, but clothing that is tight to the body, clothing for women, um, where we all have different boob shapes, body shapes, everything, and clothing that has to be functional and performance-based, right? So I struggled a lot in the beginning with fit. I couldn't even figure out how to not have a camel toe. Like everything came back with a camel toe. And because I was fitting my own clothes and I have like a, a flatter chest, like a flatter butt just because of my genetics, me being the fit model for size small I ended up finding out that that was a problem because then girls with a bigger booty who squatted down, their leggings might slip down, but it didn't slip down on my butt. So anyway, lots of stuff like that I learned, but slowly along the process, I found a technical designer to help me with the pattern making, things like that, and really like tried to understand this process. And anyway, from back then, which was 2016 to now, like I am so lucky to have the people in my life that I have now. Now we have a product development team with people from Spanx, from Reebok, like really like experienced people on the team. And our fit has never been better. Like our number one goal for PopFlex is to be the number one in fit. And I know that is a crazy goal, but it is possible and it is happening. All our, all our pants are anti camel toe. We add the pockets in, we make sure that leggings come in three to four lengths. We go from XXS all the way to 3X. We test all the sizes, not just one fit model in size small and then grading up and down. No, we test the plus, we test the standard sizes and we test on real women to make sure that these products can withstand real workouts before we even let it touch the consumer. So all of this is so, so, so important to me. Um, and the whole journey has truly been a journey. And there's, you know, I've skipped a lot of different things, but even 
starting Hot Flex in 2016, just like a year or two later, like I was about to quit everything. Like couldn't get the fit right. We got into plus size and it just wasn't working. And we began to lose trust in our customers. And so sales were going down every, and there were so many garments that came that I had to completely donate thousands of units because it wasn't what I asked for. Even if I had said the sample was perfect, you know, so there's so many things I had to learn, but it's in those moments when you feel like you're going to give up when the magic starts to happen because you decide, okay, I'm going to give it one last shot. I'm going to give it my hardest shot. And seriously, like things began to work out because you're in survival mode trying to figure it out. And again, I just feel lucky that I now have the right manufacturing partners in place, the right design team in place. In fact, we're like hiring even more right now for the product development and design team, which really is extremely important to me because what I've learned too is that at many companies, it is the merchandising or buying team that kind of leads how the product lineup is going to look. And I didn't know that really um, because I've never worked in uh, at a design company in that sense where it had that relationship. But for me, it's been so obvious that of course it has to be design led. How else are you going to lead the industry, take risk and see what's ahead if you're just going on last year or last season's data? And so um, I am just so happy with everything that's happening right now. We're growing so fast and uh, I just, I feel grateful every day to be working with the people that I'm working with, not just because they're talented and hardworking, but because they're actually like kind people and we have fun at work and we're just creating beautiful things and making people's lives like more fun. So that was a really long answer, but hopefully that, that helped. <laughs> no, definitely. I think what I hear is that there were so many hurdles, but what I want to zoom in on is the period with the knockoffs and also the trademarking issue. Like not only are there hurdles, but it feels like you had to manage your emotions and like mental well-being as well. So how did you manage your own like health and emotions during that period? Yeah, those challenges are really, really difficult because my, and this is probably unhealthy, but my business success, I allow it to relate back to my own personal worth, which is terrible. But I think growing up in um, an Asian American household, you know, your numbers, your academics, everything relates back to your personal worth, your grades, right? So it becomes an emotional battle for me because even though some of these things are, you know, I want to say it's out of my hands, but could I have done a better job and like looked at the word uh, body pop before I I got into it. I probably did, but I didn't know that something was in motion already. Like, I mean, sometimes things just happen. And the thing is, you just got to figure it out. I think you do the best that you can. You prepare the best that you can, but also if you prepare too much, you waste time and then you may never get into the thing that you're trying to do. And so, yes, it's difficult, but also it's part of life. It's failures are learning experiences, right? So, you know, that's how I felt with the body pop, pop flex thing, which was kind of more just annoying, but it's fine because at least it was only like a year or two in and not like 10 years of having this brand. So I actually feel lucky in that sense. The knocking off though, man, like that, I hate that so much because it's not just, it's not just that you're copying me and then you're you're making money because it's easy, whatever. It's literally, you're taking someone else's hard work and creativity, not doing any work and then making profit off of it. And that's how I feel about these like TikTok videos where I see girls being like, oh, look, um, I got this Lululemon dupe on Amazon. I'm like, okay, I'm glad you saved money, but do you really realize that some designer and design team had to work so hard to come up with that pant or that bra and all of a sudden some manufacturer from wherever is just going to dupe it and sell it for super cheap. Like that's, is stealing. Like I am not okay with that. And so that's how I felt about all of my graphic designs as well. And, you know, we tried to protect them legally, but it becomes so difficult. And when it becomes a beast, like it just gets out of hand. If you don't want to go down the legal route and like, you know, sue everyone. It's just not worth it. That's not worth my time. So I decided to just change course. Like we're not going to do, we're not going to play this motivational business game. Like you guys can have it and look, it's out of style anyway. So fine. But I, it was really upsetting. And what also happened too 
<laughs> business is so crazy. I also had it go the other way where someone tried to sue me because they said that they came up with that design, but I came up with the design. So like, it's been, I mean, I've like, whoo, it's a lot. And so um, I'm really not okay when it comes to design stealing. It's one of my hugest like hate things in life. <laughs> for sure. And I feel like even though frustrating, it was like an inflection point for you to go down this other path. And I'm so glad you did. And now you have Potflex. Yeah, I'm chatting with Cassie Ho, the creator of Blogilates and Potflex, the line of apparel, equipment, and accessories. So let's chat about product design and production. You're so hands-on with your design. And every time, to your point, when I see your TikTok or videos on Instagram or YouTube, I'm like, yes, I did want to put my dirty shoes into my bag and I wanted a place for my water bottle and a place for my keys. So how do you go through your process of designing and iterating to make sure that it is to your liking? So there is a lot of different ways it could start. I could, for example, see a print that I really love and I want to do something based off of that. Um, Sometimes it's wanting to solve a problem. It could start many different ways, but the end is always the same, which is it needs to be an improvement on what's already out there. It needs to solve a problem that somebody has. And also, it's got to look cute while doing that. Otherwise, I'm not going to wear it, right? So the process begins with me sketching it. And then we go through a really intense sampling and development phase. Like there is the tech packing, writing out all the measurements, everything, waiting a few weeks to get the sample back. And of course, that first initial sample is like, could be good, could be bad. Usually 90% of the time, bad. And we need Uh, at least three to four to seven more rounds to get it right. And that whole process can take anywhere from like three to seven months. Um, And then we've got the fabric buying and production and then the cut and sew part, the shipping part and all of that. And along with that, in tandem, you're doing the photo shoot, casting models, and also preparing all of the media, the the, the graphics and stuff we need for the website, um, for Shopify and everything. So the entire process for one item is nine to 12 months. And I, yes, it takes a long time, but in order to get the fit and the quality just right, like I won't let something go. And That's why when you put on our leggings, they fit and they fit well. They're made for a woman's body because we test it on real women. Um, You know, and sometimes when you get clothes from certain brands and things just feel a little wonky, it's probably because they didn't actually fit that on a real person. And what I mean is that they may have a sample size model and then just kind of calculate it, medium, large, extra large. But do they actually test like the large and the extra large? And so for me, in order to be number one and fit, we've got to test everything before it gets to the consumer. For a lot of our listeners who are aspiring founders, they actually struggle a lot with production and finding the right partners. So when you go through this process, what were some qualities you looked for when you were looking for that ideal partner? So it is still something that we are struggling with. Like I think The thing is you've got to diversify your manufacturing portfolio because you cannot rely on one factory for everything. But also because we make all sorts of things, yoga blocks, yoga mats, bags, clothing, dumbbells, and things like that, different factories for different things. But also you need different, like a few factories per that one category in case something happens. So especially like when COVID was going down a few years ago, like crazy, like, I mean, that was insane for everybody. And we're still feeling the effects of that in every area. Um, but what do I look for in a manufacturer? Number one, communication. Uh, they got to get back to us and get back to us fast and clear. Number two, they need to have all their certifications in line. That is extremely important. Um, And then number three, not necessarily in this order because they're all important. Maybe think of this more as just like a pie, but quality. Oh my gosh. Like we, like I am looking at every stitch, how far apart every stitch is from the next stitch and the fabric, like everything matters so much to me because I have to feel proud of putting it on my body because if I'm not, there's no way I'm going to even try to sell this 
to my fans who I see as my friends, right? So I have to make sure that everything is worthy of being on someone's body. So we are we vet factories all the time and pretty much how we test them is, you know, for example, we'll give that we'll give a few factories like the one tech, the same tech pack. And then we'll compare how, for example, this one running short came back from everybody, and that's a really good way to one see if they speak your language and I'm not talking about like language language. I mean in terms of like how do they interpret your design? Do they interpret it with the right aesthetic, right, that I'm looking for? And then how fast can we get it from tech pack to like ready to sell? So those are things I would watch out for. And for anyone just starting, like, Back in the day, my very first manufacturing like search trip was me literally going to China to go to the Canton Fair. And, you know, that's great, super overwhelming. But these days there is Alibaba and you can find like almost any factory on there. The thing is, a lot of times people say things that they don't mean just to like get the order going. Never go into bulk production without going through a sampling process. Pay for the sampling process. And if it works out, get it refunded in production. But like, they're always going to push you to be like, okay, cool. So want to go to bulk? Like never, ever, ever do that. Because even if you have the sample and it's perfect, zippers can switch on you in production. They won't even tell you. And that's, that's happened to me. So just be very careful. Get the inspectors. It's important. Get video and photo of everything. So important. And then, you know, when things are better and normal, like we will be flying out overseas to make sure we meet all of our manufacturing partners. Because look, at the end of the day, it's humans working with humans and relationships are extremely important. And on the other side of that is your first production run is a big financial commitment as well. So what are some financial mistakes or just financials that people need to take a note of? Yeah. So from the very beginning, all of my businesses have been bootstrapped. My parents taught me how to save money. So I think I'm good at that. And so even when it comes to figuring out how we want to spend our budget, like I'm very conscious about everything. And we invest our profits back into the business, into hiring, into making bigger orders and everything. I, I'm i going to say this now, and I think it will remain true, but like I do not plan on ever getting investment for our businesses because I want to serve the right person. And that person is not the investor. Um, that person is our customer. And I never want to be in a position where someone is telling me to do something because the numbers have to look good um, from a superficial standpoint. Like that's never going to happen. And so for me, I like to grow organically and in a way I can understand, hire in a way I can understand because how else are you going to control this? And like, even though right now, we're growing so fast, like year over year for the past few years, we've been doubling sales. Um, we have not doubled our team in that same manner because it is scary to make the wrong hires. And I've been in that position where I walked into my own office and it was toxic and I didn't feel comfortable. I would have irregular breathing. My heart would beat really fast and it just wasn't right. And so when I tell you that I feel so lucky and grateful for the team that we have now, I I really, really do because I didn't even think I could last <laughs> in my own business. So I think what you have with PotFlex is what other companies are paying and dreaming of is the fact that they're paying for an audience, a community, but you started on the inverse and you mentioned earlier that viewers are actually making those videos where you're sharing your design process viral. So when you're talking about serving your community, how do you make sure that it's the heart of everything you do and you carry it on as you evolve? Yeah. So, I mean, the products have always been with me from the very beginning, even though I think prior to this past year, essentially, I would say everybody found me through my free workout videos on YouTube. And those, like I said, were started because of a desire to connect with people and a desire to teach people. And that's all it was in the very beginning. Um, and these days, that same ethos of wanting to serve, wanting to connect, wanting to help people solve problems, same thing with the, the products. So um, even though at the moment, I'm not currently making fitness videos. And I'm not saying I'm not ever going to do them, but right now I'm just so focused on the growth of the product business. It's still the same thing. I'm still serving. I'm still helping people somehow improve their lives just in a different format. 
your organic traffic from your videos is a big driver for PopFlex. Have you experimented with paid or campaigns in any other way? Yeah. So we actually have and are experimenting with paid. Um, and pretty much it's whatever. <laughs> like, like it's not it, – like I wish it would do more, but it's – literally whatever compared to the organic videos that I put out. I don't know why that is because I think a lot of brands grow really fast through like these like ad campaigns. Maybe they're spending a ton more money. I have no idea. But the amount of reach and the the, how quickly product lines will sell out from a viral video. Like I honestly don't even know if you could pay for that. So um, I feel like the paid avenue, we're still trying to figure that out, right? Because I don't want Hot Flex's success to be solely like based on Blogilates viral videos. That is a very scary thing. Um, but in terms of paid like influencer campaigns, we did try a couple times and it's just really, really disappointing because here's the thing, like I've been on both sides of it, right? As an influencer myself and also as a business owner and things just don't come across authentic when you're being paid to say it, even if you do really like it, it just doesn't. So I would rather put my money in making great product that people have to talk about. So what's happening now is that real customers are, for example, buying our cloud hoodie, putting it on and making TikTok videos about and be like, TikTok made me buy this. Like you can't pay for that stuff. So that's where I want to invest um, our marketing efforts. We're also doing a lot, we're investing a lot in our gifting department area of the business, making sure we gift to influencers, women who want it and who may want to wear it. And look, we never tell people, hey, you can get this if you do A, B, and C. It's like, no, if you want it, here, just try it out. Like, we don't expect anything. We just hope that people love it. Tell us about some major milestones with PopFlex that you're really proud of. We just got on the Inc. 5000 list, which I'm so proud of. Um, the growth has been insane. We've actually doubled sales over the last three years consecutively. It gets harder and harder to do every year. We had over 1.5 million visitors just last month to popflexactive.com. And we are over 800% up since 2019 in sales. So lots of growth and really just lots of trying to keep up with it. Literally every week, I feel like we're facing a new challenge and having to redo our entire like system of like, okay, this, this is going to make this sticky area like flow and it'll flow for seven days. And then next week it's like, oh, okay. But like new problem. So <laughs> yeah, the growth is fun though. Um, so that's a milestone for me. And I feel like building the team that we have today and I keep bringing that up. That's a super milestone because I like, I wish I could just capture the feeling of what it is like to go to work here at um, Blogilates and PopFlex because it's just like laughter and joy and like, and like, and hard work, like all in one. We're just grinding and growing this thing. And it's just so fun. Um, and I hope to keep this culture for as long as I can, because it is so special to me. And every person on the team is so special to me. Um, and I would not be able to do everything that we're doing without everyone on the team. Speaking of your target collection, and also the fact that you did work as a buyer, a lot of our listeners will be curious to hear what are some advice you have for those who are wishing to have their products in a retailer, how to get those relationships and how to manage it throughout the years? The relationship with a retailer is difficult. It's very different than D2C. You don't have as much control and the buying team has all the power pretty much. You can make suggestions and say like, hey, I think this high ponytail hat is going to do really well. But if they've never sold a high ponytail hat, don't have any numbers uh, to back up what I say, then they may not take the risk. And that's always, that's been the biggest challenge with the mass retailers. So luckily for me, we do have the numbers from our PopFlex D2C side of the business. So that is always helpful in helping, you know, to push uh, my point of view on how things are sold. And look, the high ponytail hat sold so well that now it's coming back into stores at, instead of not just at a few, like, te like, you know, 200 test stores, but like all thousands of stores in different multicolors and all that kind of thing. So, um, that's the difficult part with that in terms of connections. I mean, luckily for me, it was through an agency that reached out and like made that connection. Um, otherwise, 
I think that's one of the toughest things. I, I wouldn't even know how to navigate that because a while back, I thought maybe going the wholesale route for Pop Flex was the right thing to do. You know, try to get into the Nordstroms and things like that. Um, no one would write me back. LinkedIn, nobody writes me back. Cold email, nobody writes me back. Like try to DM somebody, nobody writes me back. And I'm that was just several months ago. So I'm not talking about like when I first started. But the thing is, you lose so much money on wholesale anyway. So why not invest all that money into your marketing, right? Into gifting the right people, into creating better product. And so I'm really going all in on the D2C. I love the nimbleness that we have, all the control that we have, and the fact that the only person we're truly serving is the customer, not somebody who thinks they know what the customer will want. Well, we love having you on our platform, and we will always write you back. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> so you mentioned your team and how much you love working with your team. How did you go about selecting the right members and delegating responsibilities? In the beginning, I had hired people the traditional way, which now looking at it, I feel like you go, it's like going on a blind date and then offering a marriage proposal right afterwards and just dealing with, with it until you have to get a divorce. Like that is not natural and how things should be done. And I think that was a lot of why it didn't work out in the beginning with that initial team. So now what we do is we work with freelancers in the specific area that we need. For example, if I need someone in graphic design, then we'll work with a freelancer for a few months. And if they like working with us, if we like working with them, I'll offer a full-time job, we negotiate, and then it's great. And so like that has truly worked out for us for many of the team members who are currently on our team because we get a, a phase to like test each other out. And it's really important. It's not just for me to test them out. It's for them to test me out as well. So that's how I go about hiring people. Mm -hmm. And how big is the team now? So the team now is 17 full-time people, but now it's also across like multiple brands. So we're all working a lot all the time. And we also work with 40 contractors on the daily. Wow. For you, how do you differentiate managing a team and also leading a team? Leading and managing are two completely different things. And I didn't know that in the beginning as like a young, <laughs> a young manager leader, whatever you want to call it, business owner. But when it comes to leading... Well, I guess when it comes to leading and managing, you have to have a clear vision for the goal. You have to have a clear vision for the company and everyone needs to be on board. And we all need to work towards the same direction, right? But everyone also needs their own mini personal goals within the bigger company goals so that you feel like you're streamlined alongside everybody else. In terms of management, I think it's really important to make sure that people feel heard all the time. And look, I'm always listening, always asking uh, what people think. And not even just from like a, you know, internal business structure sense, but like even like products like, hey, like, do you girls like wear this or like, do you like this or whatever? Like just asking all the time. Um, we have lots of conversations on Slack daily and then also sending out gifts or uh, personalized, like just like things that show that you really appreciate and are listening to your your people, your peeps. And not just like work-related things, but if, for example, someone is running a marathon and they just finished their very first marathon, like sending a little congratulations gift, like things like that. And look, and, and if that's not your love language, I don't want anyone to force that, but my love language is gift giving. <laughs> so I, I have a lot of fun um, shopping and like sending people things to know that they're appreciated because that's important for me to know that. I, I do am so grateful for them every day. Yeah. And then leadership, like, look, we, every quarter we have a company presentation where I'm keeping us all updated on our top three goals for the year. And I think if everyone is very clear about what those goals are, then the, that funnels down to the departments and they can make sure that the decisions they make on the daily are also heading in that same direction. So what's something new about PotFlex that you can share with us that we can look forward to? Ooh, okay. So um, this is something that we've been working on for two years now. It'll be more than two years by the time it comes out, but we are going to be, fingers crossed, <laughs> releasing our first swimwear next year. Ah, 
I know. I'm so, so, so excited because I love bikinis. I love the beach. I love snorkeling. I love Bora Bora and all of that. So I cannot wait to be able to wear my own swim um, on vacation. So that will be all-inclusive sizing, um, XXS to 3X and We've got things with more booty coverage and some stuff that's super cheeky, you know, Um, things a little bit more modest and things with a little bit more cleavage. So I'm very, very excited about it. Nice. We're super excited to keep an eye out for that. And it's amazing that it's all self-funded and it's driven just from your creations. So just amazing, like all around, really proud to see how much you've grown over the years. Oh, thank you. And I feel I feel very lucky that I get to live this life. I rarely sleep these days, but it's also like so fun. Like all of this is just so fun. I, I feel very grateful. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here today, Cassie. Thank you so much, Shwang. That's Cassie Ho, creator of Blogilates and Popflex. I'm Shwang Yasser Shan, and I'll see you next time on Shopify Masters. 